If only somebody would have told me, if you do just these couple of things, you can save yourself hundreds, thousands of dollars, hours of frustration, and have a better customer experience. Well, I'm here to share that with you today so I can make your life selling cards a lot easier. Let's jump in. One, let's remove and demystify this idea that you cannot make money selling singles. In fact, it's probably one of the highest margin areas in the TCG resale space. However, it's at a smaller dollar amount. In order to do this properly, you really need to make sure that you do this one thing very carefully. Set your floor price. Many people come into the hobby, especially using places like TCG Player, and they list their cards for a penny. And when somebody orders a thousand cards for a penny, you wonder, how can I package this and not have to spend an arm and a leg? How can I ship it out and actually still make money? And that is because you don't want to just go with the lowest listing. You want to make sure that you have a floor that you're comfortable with. In my case, it's between 10 to 15 cents on the majority of our cards. And again, that's the bottom price. The floor ultimately represents the lowest price that you're willing to accept. Now, as you get to more valuable cards, those floor prices obviously are much higher and you tend to meet the market price. And there's plenty of great tools of which we'll cover a few in an upcoming video on how do you price your products. But for now, just keep in mind that your floor price doesn't have to be where you're always losing money. Number two is you wanna make sure that you understand your shipping cost and you charge it accordingly. Now you wanna be very efficient here because the shipping costs can be the make or break whether the buyer is gonna place the order with your store or not. However, as long as you source those products in a cost efficient way that also provides a good customer experience, then it's a win win for everybody. In the beginning, make sure you understand that cost. And I mean a spreadsheet, a piece of paper, whatever that is for you, and list it out. As silly as it sounds, you would be surprised how many times when you count in the postage, the actual shipping materials, and your time, which is one of the things that people forget about the most, you actually lose money at the end of the day because you're not taking that into account. You tend to look at the sale price, the card, and there's my money, I made the margins. And that's not the full story. So take a look at a deep dive, at least initially, or maybe per category. I tend to do this for booster boxes for one price. I have a different box and material for ETB, uh, booster box case, or even just single cards in different quantities. So break it down at first, just start with what does it cost me to ship a single card? Understand the cost and then make sure you charge that cost to the customer accordingly. Point number three is gonna be one that sounds somewhat intuitive, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do it make sure you process your orders in a timely fashion. If I'm a customer and I place an order, you don't wanna wait two weeks in order to hear that the order has been shipped or now there's a problem and you have to do a refund. People wanna know these things quickly. In the day and age of Amazon and 24 hour deliveries to your doorstep, you wanna make sure you provide the best service you can that's also sustainable. Obviously doing this every hour is, is not gonna be something that you probably want to try to maintain because it will cause you to burn out. However, maybe start with, let me try to process every two to three days if you are now doing it perhaps weekly. In our case, we do this every 24 hours. We process all orders that came in every 24 hours. And then of course, there's some exceptions on holidays. But this ensures that your customers know that they're gonna get a good turnaround time, a good experience. And of course, if there's any issues, they are addressed as quickly as possible. Last but not least, point number four. And that's gonna be, especially in places like eBay, offer the return policy. Now. It's gonna sound a little bit scary at first. And, and when you're in the beginning, it truly is quite a big hit when you have that return that maybe accounts for a third or fourth of your overall monthly sales. However, as you scale in numbers and you continue to have more orders, more satisfied customers, the number of returns that come back begin to be a fraction of a fraction of 1%. 
And so what you're ultimately doing is you're giving the selling platform, TCG player, eBay, whatever it may be, you're giving them the trustworthiness that you as a seller, and then in the same turn, you're giving that same confidence to the buyers and say, well, if they, for whatever reason, weren't happy with their purchase, you'd be happy to take that back. And this overall gives you a better experience and the few hassles that you do have are few and far between. And obviously, if you have any bad buyers, make sure you block them. Uh, if they're going to abuse the system and try to abuse you as a seller, then that's okay. Block them and move on. If selling your singles sounds like too much work and you just don't want to dive into it, I fully understand it is quite the grind. However, we offer services to also support you there. So we offer consignment as well as pure buyout services. All the contact details are below in the description. Feel free to reach out and we're happy to support you there as well. Stay tuned and we have more tips and tricks on how to sell your cards efficiently, effectively, and to have fun while doing it. We appreciate your time as always, and we look forward to seeing all of you on the next one.